SwiftUI gives us a dedicated path type for drawing custom shapes. It's very low level, by which I mean you'll usually want to wrap it in something else in order for it to be more useful. But as it's the building block that underlies other work we'll do, we're going to start there. Just like colors, gradients, and shapes, paths are views in their own right. This means we can use them just like text views and images, although as you'll see, it's a bit clumsy. Let's start with a simple shape, drawing a triangle. There are a few ways of creating paths, including one that accepts a closure of drawing instructions. This closure must accept a single parameter, which is the path to draw into. Now I realize this can be a bit brain bending at first because we're creating a path and inside the initializer for the path, we're getting past the path to draw into. But think of it like this. SwiftUI is creating an empty path for us, then giving us a chance to add to it as much as we want. Paths have lots of methods of making shapes with squares, circles, arcs, and lines. For our triangle, we have to move to a starting position, then add three lines, like this. Path, path in, path, dot move to CG point, x200, y100. Path, dot add line to, CG point, x100, y300. Path, that I'll add line to, CG point, X300, Y300. And path dot add line to, CG point, X200, Y100. We haven't used CG point before, but I did sneak in a quick reference to CG size back in project six. CG is short for core graphics, which provides a selection of basic types that let us reference X, Y coordinates, which is CG point, widths and heights, which is CG size, rectangular frames, CG rect, and even numbers like CG float. When our triangle code runs, you'll see a large black triangle. Where you see it relative to your screen depends on what simulator you're using, which is part of the problem of these raw paths. We have to use exact coordinates. So if you want to use a path by itself, you either need to accept that sizing across all devices or use something like Geometry Reader to scale them relative to their container. We'll look at a better option shortly, but first let's look at coloring our path. One option is to use a fill modifier like this, dot fill, color, dot blue. We can also use the stroke modifier to draw around the path rather than filling it in. Dot stroke, color, dot blue, line width 10. That doesn't look quite right though. The bottom corners of our triangle are nice and sharp, but the top corner is broken. This happens because SwiftUI makes sure lines connect up neatly with what comes before and after, rather than just being a series of individual lines. But our last line has nothing after it, so there's no way to make a connection. One way to fix this is just to draw the first line again, which means the last line has a connecting line to match up with. So we'd say path.addLine2, CG point, X100, Y300. That works great, as you can see. And it even works with transparency. If you use a transparent stroke color, such as color.blue.opacity 0.25, then you'll see the whole stroke gets faded uniformly without seeing any sort of double stroke along the first line. An alternative is to use SwiftUI's shape style struct, which gives us control over how every line should be connected to the line after it, called line join, and how every line should be drawn when it ends without a connection after it, called line cap. This is particularly useful because one of the options for join and cap is dot round, which creates gently rounded shapes like this. Style, stroke style, line width 10, line cap, dot round, line join, dot round. With that in place, you can remove the extra line from our path because it's no longer needed. Using rounded corners solves the problem of our rough edges, but it doesn't solve the problem of fixed coordinates. For that, we have to move on from paths and look at something more complex, shapes.